All right, you guys made it. We are on the last day of our uh, stats unit, and today we're going to talk about z-scores. Maybe you've heard of z-scores before, maybe you haven't, um, but it's a really important calculation and formula to get memorized and to understand what it does and what it communicates. Um, what a z-score is, is it represents the number of standard deviations above or below average a specific data value falls. So if you were to convert your test score to a z-score, you would need to know the average and the standard deviation, and you would use this formula. And if your z-score was positive, it would tell you above average, and you would want your z-score to be a really high number because that would mean you scored many standard deviations above the mean. If your z-score is negative, that means you fell below the average, and exactly how far away from the average um, in terms of standard deviations is what your z-score would tell you. So it represents a number of standard deviations away, above or below the average. Here is your formula. By the way, what's, when you convert, it's called standardizing. So that's another vocab word. When you change a certain um, data value, let's say it's your percent on a quiz or a test, to a z-score, that's called standardizing. Um, here's our formula. You take your z-score, that's what you're trying to figure out. So the z-score equals your specific data value minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. So note the symbols that I'm using here, and those stand for mean and standard deviation. Um, this very first example, this is the purpose of converting to z-scores. Let's say that two sisters are in competition for a bigger allowance from their parents, and one of the sisters is like a senior and one of them is a freshman, whatever, and their parents are placing a huge emphasis on their final exams. And whoever does better on the final gets an increase in their allowance, and the other sister is screwed. Um, so let's say that Angie scores a 90% on the multi-exam, and Lexi scores a 92 on her Algebra 1 exam. How can we decide who did better? And so some questions that you might have in mind is, okay, well, obviously Lexi gets the increase in the allowance because she did better on her test. Well, keep in mind that Angie's in multi and Lexi's in algebra one. So can you like weight the fact that Angie is in an AP really high level class and Lexi is in an entry level algebra class? So like, would you expect Angie to do worse because she's in a harder class or how can we decide that? Also, we don't really know um, how the other students did. Maybe the algebra one exam was like really hard for all the algebra one students. Maybe the multivariate exam was like super easy so we need to take all of these things into account it's not just who got the higher score so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pause and I'm gonna write just some notes down so that when you're reviewing you can have those thoughts to look at and so I wrote down a couple of things one other thing I forgot to say maybe Lexi isn't as good at math as Angie is and so maybe her 92 um, is like a huge accomplishment for her. And maybe Angie's 90 is like, maybe Angie usually gets 95s and above. Like, I don't know. These are all the questions that you should be considering. And that is the entire purpose of standardizing. And so the mean and the standard deviation is given for the multifinal at 82 and 3. 82 is the mean, the standard deviation is 3. The mean and standard deviation for Algebra 1 was 87 and 4. Okay, so if Angie got a 90, but the average was 82, does that that's 8% above average. And if Lexi got a 92, but the average was 87, that's only 5 points or 5% 5 above average. So like, can we compare just above or below average? Not really, because the standard deviation has something to do with it as well. So let's calculate Angie and Lexi's z-scores and interpret what they mean. So I'm going to use that formula that you have written above. So the z-score formula is z equals x minus mean over standard deviation. I'm going to do Angie's score, and I'm going to do Lexi's score. x minus mean over standard deviation equals z. So I plugged in those numbers, you guys. I took the um, average for or Angie's score minus the average for multi divided by the standard deviation for multi. Same thing with Lexi. She had a different average and different standard deviation because she took a different final, obviously. But her score minus the average minus the standard deviation, this number is higher than this number. What this means is Angie scored two and two-thirds standard deviations above the mean. Keep in mind what that means. Remember what our normal distribution looks like? One, two, three. Angie's score is somewhere way out here. One, two, and a little bit more standard deviations above the mean. Versus Lexi's score is only 1.25. One, two, three. So like right here. 
That's where Lexi's score is. So which one did better than average for their class? Angie wins. But just keep in mind, she happened to have the lower score overall. Even though she got a 90 and Lexi got a 92, it's unfair to just compare those. It's not apples to apples. That is why we have the Z-score formula. So I'm going to write a little bit of an interpretation off to the side just so you can get these things into your notes. And so I wrote off to the side here, um, Angie scored two, almost three standard deviations above the average for her class, but Lexi only scored 1.25 standard deviations above the average for her class. Therefore, when you standardize those two scores, Angie is the winner. She did better relative to her class. That's what this means. That's why we standardize so that we could fairly compare the two sisters. Who gets the allowance increase? Angie does. So I guess I should have written my answer right there. Okay, next question. We have a question about um, the heights of young women and they are approximately normally distributed. Remember that phrase is going to be in most of the sentences for this um, section. And we're given a mean and a standard deviation. So the mean of women's heights is 64 inches. Standard deviation is two and a half. How many standard deviations below average is someone who's 61 inches tall? So what if we were doing the um, heights of people in this class and your height is 61 inches and we have a certain mean and standard deviation. You wanna know what your Z-score is. How far below average are you? So you're three inches below average, but how far is that in terms of Z-scores? How many standard deviations away are you? So we're gonna use our Z-score formula x minus the mean over the standard deviation. Um, the x value is 61. The mean is 64. Divide by 2.5. That gives us a negative 3 over 2.5, which is negative 1.2 equals negative 1.2. So negative 1.2, remember that's because this person is below average, that's why they have a negative z-score. And so keep in mind what that tells us is on the bell curve with a mean of 64 right here, we're going 1.2, so a little bit beyond one standard deviation below, that's where the 61 falls. Okay, so 1.2 standard deviations below the mean. Um, how many standard deviations above average is someone who is 70 inches tall? So we're above average there because the average is 64, but again, I'm going to calculate a z-score. 70 minus 64 over 2.5. That's 6 over 2.5. It's a positive number. It gives us 2.4. So 2.4 standard deviations above the mean. Again, you don't have to draw a sketch for each of these, but the mean is here, one, two, three. So I'm going one, two, and a little bit more. It's way out here is that person. So pretty far above the average, 2.4 standard deviations above average. I am gonna skip um, example three and example four for a second, and I wanna go right to example five. We will talk about example four and three in class as a warm up tomorrow. But finishing off the section, we've got Babe Ruth and a bunch of other baseball studs here. We have their number of home runs with their mean and their standard deviation for that season. We've got Roger Maris, Mark McGuire, and Barry Bonds. So, um, what the question is, in order to make a fair comparison, we need to look at how these um, baseball players actually compare to the other players in their season. So why would it not be fair to compare Babe Ruth from 1927 all the way up to Barry Bonds, who's 2001? So what could have happened in that like more than 70 year span? Um, I don't know, maybe access to training facilities has increased. Maybe research for trainers, physical therapists, um, coaches has increased. Overall, baseball players probably have evolved and have had a lot more opportunities compared to those that were in almost like the 1930s, so really long time ago, 1920s. So what we have to do is we have to standardize all four of these guys to be able to say who did better relative to everyone else in their season. And so what you might be thinking right away is Barry Bonds is the winner because he hit the most home runs, period. But we have much different means and much different standard deviations here. And the reason for that is all of those other factors that play into home runs. I wrote that up here. Quality of batters, batters and pitchers, hardness of the baseball, dimension of the ballpark, plus all the other stuff that I mentioned. Um, so what we're going to do is I'm going to calculate a Z-score for all four of these guys to be able to say who actually is the best home run hitter out there. 
So what I've done here, you guys, is I have set up for all four of the baseball players their own z-score calculation. So remember, you take their x value, which is the number of home runs that they hit, that's their value, and subtract the mean. So the mean here is 7.2 and divide by the standard deviation, which is 9.7. All of these guys are way above average for their season or their year. So all of these z-scores are going to be positive numbers. We want to know the one that has the highest z-score, meaning he is the most most number of standard deviations above the mean. And so here's what all those numbers crunched end up looking like, you guys. So you can verify by using your own calculator, but it does appear as though Babe Ruth is the big winner. He is more than five standard deviations above average, where the other guys only have z-scores in the threes. So Barry Bonds is second place because he is really close to four standard deviations above average. Mark McGuire a little bit under that, and Roger Maris just over three. And so again, just to reiterate what these z-scores mean, is that if we were um, calculating average and above and below average, the average is right in the middle, and the number of standard deviations, we go three this direction and three this direction. None of them are on this side, and the reason for that is because none of them are below average, but we do have um, Babe Ruth, who is more than five standard deviations way out there above average and so that's again why the empirical rule is 99.7 um, percent of the data is between three standard deviations because occasionally there's going to be a dude way out here or on the other side just keep that in mind that's why it's not always a hundred percent of the data within three standard deviations um, roger maris he was 3.1 something so he's right here rm i'm going to label this babe ruth He's the best. He wins. And then Mark McGuire is almost 4. Um, um. And then again, a little bit beyond that, Barry Bonds. Right at 4, pretty much. So that's where all four of those baseball players fall. So all of them are like pretty far above average. But the winner, the obvious winner, more than 5 standard deviations above average for his season is Barry Bonds. Again, what I did is I standardized all of their home runs with their means and their standard deviations from their um, season. That's called standardizing, and that's how I got these z-scores. And all of these z-scores represent number of standard deviations above average. They're all positive because they're above. If any of them were negative, they would be below average. Okay, we'll hit those other two examples in class as a warm-up. Thank you guys for watching. Hey, we're done with the chapter. Good job. I will see you tomorrow.